Welcome back. This is the third project for the full stack JavaScript book. And uh, I'm in the folder 03-parse-sdk. You can see it on the right side. I've opened index.html. It looks very similar to the first project, which is Twitter Bootstrap Scaffolding. And uh, the only two, there are two uh, differences. One is I'm including parse library. I'm hot linking it from CDN. So this would not work, this example, this project would not work if you're offline. Obviously, Parse is a cloud technology. There is no way you can make it work offline. You need the connection. So we're linking this library from the CDN and that will enable us to use uh, certain global objects in our JavaScript code. The JavaScript code would be in the app.js, which we also include. So far so good. jQuery, we're using the local file as well. Okay, and then we have this text area. So I wrote this text area so we can submit some data to the parse. And I have some default value which is named John and text high. So the formatting looks weird because text area preserves the white space and I wanted it to look nicely on uh, the web page, not in the code. It's okay if your code is ugly. The most important is the UI, which is the web page. And then I have this uh, button which will save the object. I'm using uh, btn save to pull this object from the JavaScript code. And then I have this uh, pre-class equal log. That's where we will output the result to make sure our object has been saved. We can also see the object ID, the newly created object ID from parse.com. Okay, so now let's go to app.js and see what's happening there. So everything is in document.ready because we want to make sure that our object has been loaded. Then we have keys keys for parse.com. Without the keys, parse.com would not be able to tell who is this, is this an authorized call, what database, etc. So you would need two keys. One is application ID, which is sort of like your uh, unique identifier for that application. And another one is the JavaScript key. Parse.com has five or six different keys, so what you need is the JavaScript key. So copy and paste it. Uh, on line 7 and 9, those are my values, so don't use those. Then uh, the most important line is num line number 11. This is how we initialize parse. So once we include that library from the CDN, we'll get this wonderful object parse. And then we just call parse.com, we pass our keys. So that will enable us to uh, persist the objects to the database. But before we can persist our object, let's first uh, create it. So test, it's uh, just an arbitrary name. You can come up with your own name. I'm using test here. And then I'm instantiating the object. Okay, and uh, the rest of the code goes inside of the callback for btn save. So first thing, we want to get that value. Remember the text area? This is how we get it. Dollar sign text area dot val. Val is a jQuery function that gets the value and dollar sign is the JSQuery, jQuery selector. So we get the text area. We have only one text area. So I'm not using any classes or IDs. I'm just getting it by the tag name. Okay, so there is no hash. There is no dots. It's just the tag name. And then I'm using json.parse. json.parse is a function that will take a string and give us JavaScript object. We need the JavaScript object to save it to parse. We cannot just save a string. It would not be a nice data. And one thing to know about json.parse, it's very, 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 very picky. That's why I put it in a try catch. We need it in a try catch because every time you have a missing double quote or in some invalid character, it will just crush your application. But if you have try catch, as in this example, what you would see is a nice alert message and you can go and fix it and try again. Okay, so now we're just sure that we have the data. 
we can actually save it. The method to use is test.save. We're passing the data and then we have two callbacks, success and error. Obviously success is for when everything went smoothly and error when there are some errors. And uh, on the success, what we want to do, we want to get that, that log, which is a pre with a class log. We want to actually see our object, our newly created object, because it will have some cool new information. It will have timestamps, it will have object ID, etc. Uh, these two parameters, if you don't know, they're for a better formatting of a string. Instead of all jumbled up in a one line, you will get nice structured JSON view. Okay, so let's see this in action. I already have static server running and I'm pointing to the folder name. Let me refresh it. Okay, so as you can see, we have our beautiful JSON. So let's click save object. Okay, a few milliseconds passed. If you noticed, we have our object. Ta -da! What you see is that parse so smart, it's actually added timestamp for us. This is our object where we have timestamps. This is very, very cool. And then uh, we have this object ID, which is also cool. It's a unique object ID. I'm also logging it in the console log if you, if you prefer console logs. So now I'm going to parse.com. This is my application, the case for which I used in uh, the example, but you should you should get your own and then i'm going to the core and navigate it on the left side to the test so test is that the name if you remember from app.json if you change this to something else obviously you would look for a different name okay so i see this object right here john high okay and uh, this is the id if you go back and compare to i uh, compare the id the last two letters is Y4. Go back, it's Y4, okay? So now, if I want to change this object, all I need to do is just type something. Here, click Save, okay? So now this is the new output. If I go back to the cloud, to my wonderful browser, data browser, I see the new value. So how cool is that? We just changed the value. We first we created the object, then we changed the value. So why it changes the second time and why it created the new object the first time? That's a good question. Let me explain it. So we're back into the app.js and as you can see, this line is executed only once when uh, the document is loaded, when the page is loaded. So we're only creating an object once, but we save it each time we click the save button. So that's why when we first click the save button, the object is created. It's a new object. We get the new ID. But then if we keep clicking without refreshing the page, we still have the reference to that um, original object that's been created the first time. And uh, the next, the second time, the third time we click on the save button, we're not creating a new object, we're just saving the original object. Make sense? Wonderful. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.